163 kilometres today from Betanzos to San Andres de Tejido and the climbing starts early with two third category climbs in the first 60 kilometres. Plenty of rolling terrain over the next 90 or so, then the day's intermediate sprint just before the final climb, which is longer than yesterday's 11 kilometres but nowhere near as steep. Even a sub-par contador shouldn't lose time here and Daniel was waiting for him by the signing-in stage down at the start this morning. Alberto, hai perso ancora un po', un po' di tempo ieri, sei preoccupato a questo punto della vuelta? Hombre, eh, sì, no, eh, a ver, eh, ayer creo che pudo essere un mal dia, però per l'altro lato, si sì, è verità che avevamo un minuto e mezzo perdito, dopo de, de tre etapi non entravano nei piani, eh, però bueno, è la situazione che abbiamo ora, hai che intentare darle la vuelta, io credo che è terreno per ello. Aunque no sea nada fácil, y bueno, vamos a ir día a día. Yesterday's climb was, was really steep. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think it was a good day for me. I paced it well. Um, sitting still third in GC, so pretty happy with, 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 with that for now. But um, yeah, today's another summit finish, another, another opportunity to give the legs a test and just see, see exactly where everyone's at on a, on a longer type climb. Surprised at the guys who did lose time yesterday. Contador lost time again. Quintana lost a bit. Yeah, um, to be honest, I am a bit surprised. I, uh, uh, Alberto looks like he's in great shape at the moment, and I, I did expect him to be up there yesterday, um, especially after their TTT not going so well. I, I thought yesterday was a good opportunity for him to take time. Um, let's see. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll uh, surprise us all today. It was something of a surprise to see Miguel Angel Lopez appearing at all this morning, having crashed flat on his face in the closing stages yesterday, but he seems determined to carry on. Miguel Angel, sappiamo che hai rotto tre denti. Come ti senti stamattina? Bueno, è un poco duro e per comer, para todo, pero bueno, è importante es que pues ahora he decidido tomar la partida y vamos a ver qué qué tal nos sale en estos días. È difficile mangiare e, e bere, è, è difficile comere e vivere? Sì, perché beh, sta rotto i denti, ti ha toccato algo il nervo, e quindi ti metti algo, acqua, frío, dulce, e nada, ti duele molto. So Miguel Angel Lopez continuing for the moment, although in some discomfort, and abandoning in some discomfort early in the stage was I Am Cycling's Vicente Reynes leaving the race with prostatitis. At least he won't be obliged to produce a urine sample at the end of the day. Now, a huge breakaway established itself eventually. 20 riders in it, including Scott Thwaites of Bora Argon 18, Pierre Hollande of Cannondale Drapac, and Lotto Soudal's Thomas de Gendt, who may just still be going from his last attack in the Tour de France. The highest placed man in the overall standings in the break, though, was Darwin Atapuma, who started the day a minute 43 behind Ruben Fernandez, and the breakaway's lead was soon well beyond that. So Lillian Kanjan turns right-handed, he's got just over four kilometres to go, he's got uh, three and a half minutes over the red jersey group, that's not his immediate concern though, he, as you can tell by his repeated worried glances from right to left, is interested in what's coming up the road behind him, whether anyone can get to this man. First of all, it was Pierre Hollande who tried to get across, but he, his attack went absolutely nowhere. And I think Pierre Hollande is in danger fairly soon, as you see him go right-handed now, of getting swallowed up by the remaining, remaining 15 or so riders from that original breakaway group who are still in contention and won't have given up on a, a stage victory just yet. Darwin Atapuma, of course, among them. 135 down in the general classification, and thinking about both a stage win, if you can get to this man, and the possibility of a red jersey if you can hold off the chase behind in the GC group. But they've got to get to this man first if they want the stage win, and it's a very strong ride from Lillian Kanjan in an unusual climb. 11.2 kilometres that have started uphill with a bit of a descent in the middle, and now he's on the second and final part of this climb. Golom hasn't given up, has he? No, no, he's sitting there. He's, uh, he's stuck right in between the two, so we'll see now in a second. Hopefully, it's coming to shots so we can get an idea of off there they are yep so that's the atapuma group which is in a it seems to have lost all its organization which is normally still quite a big group and nobody's going to want to help each other so they need to attack and break free well kamjan's just got to keep his form together and time trial his way to the finish line and worry less about what's behind him on the road pierre Hollande, i think has about 15 or 20 seconds to make up on the man from direct energy it's a france one two at the moment 
will it be that way in three kilometers time Kamjan has performed this year in fact on climbs but nothing like on this kind of stage and this kind of setting against this kind of opposition because that was a 20 rider breakaway packed with talent and it's a, a surprise perhaps to some that this man has at the moment at least shown himself the best of that breakaway it was full of climbing talent as well. If he wasn't just Darwin Atapuma, you've got the likes of Skabu Gamai who can climb brilliantly, so too can Mahawi Kudus, and a bunch of other riders, including Thomas de Ghent, who've been there and done that on climbs as recently as the Tour de France and Mont Ventoux, of course, in Thomas de Ghent's case. So if he can bat away this kind of quality opposition, then we're looking at a future talent, possibly making his first mark of many on uh, the Grand Tours. There's Roland battling his way up to the uh, three kilometers to go marker, and I think Roland is going backwards, and indeed he is. So that group has caught him at Atapuma. Darwin Atapuma is right on his wheel, and for the umpteenth time, Atapuma gets out of his saddle and accelerates. Atapuma now is thinking about both the stage victory and that uh, red jersey. There's a reaction, I think, from Mahawi Kudus on his wheel, the Dimension Data rider. But Atapuma, well, on paper, he's the best climber in this breakaway group, and he's broken the rest of them, including Pierre Roland, who rejoins his teammate Ben King in the company of of uh, Jaime Rozon from uh, Cajarural Seguros. And I think they're all going backwards, those riders. And that's because of Atapuma's acceleration now. Is it going to be enough? Has he left it? Has he left himself enough road to get across? Well, he went exactly under the three kilometer banner. So he's now got a three kilometer time trial ahead of him to, to try and bridge up to uh, and pass Kamjan. But it's, uh, which is doable, a climber of his, uh, his abilities, if he's feeling good, um, anything's possible. Well, we haven't got a time gap. All we can do is uh, look at the helicopter shots as and when we get them. There is Darwin Atapuma, and he's dropped the rest now, so he's on his own in second place on the road. But it doesn't look like he's getting away from them very fast, and there's absolutely no sign of the man from Direct Energy in sight just yet. He's got clear distance, though, to that chase group, Darwin Atapuma, and is just inching away from them all the while. Meanwhile, Kamjan is heading towards two kilometres to go. I think it's going to be a significant uh, gap he's still got, Kamjan. It's uh, two, but two, two kilometres, and Atapuma is in, in full flight now. He doesn't have to worry about anything because he's dropped. And that's uh, Pete Kenya who's uh, moved off the front. That's an interesting little move from Pete Kenya. Still very highly placed in the general classification himself. 47 seconds down on the race leader. And interesting is the red, the, so it's the, uh, the red jersey himself who's now in domestic duty. So it's uh, obviously Team Sky trying to put Movistar under stress, and they have done because they've used up all the domestiques, and now they're, they're, I think they might still have Castro Viejo left behind, but it's interesting they're putting Ruben Fernandez straight on the front. There's Atapuma. Now, there he goes through uh, two kilometers to go, and I think he's about at least 30 seconds down on Kamjan and really going nowhere relative to that group, so I don't think he's making any inroads on the lead for the Frenchman. What he must be interested now in, Darwin Atapuma is just defending his time advantage over that man in the red jersey. Atapuma's pace is so high, it is for everyone is starting to explode slightly behind. That group of four riders is now starting to split apart. So everyone is, everyone understands now there's no playing games, everyone's going as hard as they can and it is ripping it to pieces. But you can see Atapuma, he is gaining, he's gaining ground on him, he's coming back. The road gets steeper as well. You can see it about three, four, five hundred metres further up the road. They kick right-handed and the gradient just kicks up again. That's going to hurt Kamjan. Meanwhile, Pete Kenyuk has got himself clear of the red jersey group and uh, he has certainly provoked a bit of a reaction from Movistar and he could be propelling himself up the general classification again. There's the kite for one kilometre to go and that is the kick up in the gradient that is going to absolutely sting when Kamjan hits it. But at least he knows where he is now and he knows how far he's got to go exactly and how long it might take him. What he doesn't want to do is start looking over his shoulder to see where the rest are chasing him down because, well, let's have a look for ourselves. There he is, just Kamjan heading towards the kite. How far back is Atapuma? Not in sight just yet. Surely that is a... Uh, there he is. Uh, that is a race lead he's going to ha be able to defend. I'm absolutely certain of that all the way to the finish, unless something really dramatic happens and he cracks. I mean, it looks, uh, it looks good, but still, it's, it's hard to explain just how hard it is. Uh, in, a, in a finish like that, he's done a big gap. He's already been off the front since uh, since five, six kilometres, seven kilometres from the finish. So he's already done a big, big effort, and it's got a, a very steep ramp down that for last K. And there you can see the time gap is 30 seconds between, uh, between the two. So that's... Uh, that's significant with 1K to go. And Atapuma looks like the rider who's getting weaker, and he's uh, just thinking about that red jersey now. I think Atapuma is he's passed by Astana's Andre Zeitz. 
So Atapuma is weakening, and not this man, Kanjan, who is forced out of his saddle by that increased gradient. Meanwhile, well, the red jersey's cracked. Fernandez is going backwards after his second place yesterday. That red jersey looks like it's going to be hard to defend. And uh, that's good news for Darwin Atapuma, that he, at least, is uh, dropping out of contention. He will be effectively, with that, handing over the primacy in the Movistar team to Alejandro Valverde, the man in the white jersey, sitting in second place in that train, just behind Danny Moreno. And the Movistar really are turning it up now. So, again, they've... They've timed this very well indeed, and Pete Kenyuk's also forced that. He's forced their card a little bit. Team Sky haven't gone up there and set a pace themselves. They send Pete Kenyuk up the road to, to force Movistar into action, and, uh, and it's worked. Oh, look how close they are on him now. Zeitz is dragging Atapuma ever closer. Maybe the camera has foreshortened that slightly. The chase group is at 500 metres now. Kanjan surely still good on the air. He's got enough in the tank to get over the line on his own. Yeah, I think so. They're still at 27 seconds. That camera is shortening it slightly, but they are coming back very fast. You can see how much he's struggling now, Kanjan, which is normal. But Zeitz is looking very strong. I think that's Ben King who's there. Yeah, the, it is. And not uh, the climber, uh, Pierre Roland. He's, so. further, he's further back, isn't he, Pierre Roland? You can see him there. Meanwhile, Kamjan eyeing up uh, 250 to go, 200 to go. He can start to think about his celebration, make sure that he zips up his jersey, he does his duty to his sponsors. Thank you very much. As if he was listening to my words, there he does. Uh, he'll be doing this many more times in his career, um, given the showing that he's just put on on this climb. Stage four belongs to Lilian Kamjan, it belongs to Direct Energy, and once again it belongs to France, who after a disappointing Tour de France can celebrate two consecutive stage wins on uphill finishes. His time doesn't matter. All that he's concerned about is getting over the line and doing his thing. Lilian Kanjan takes stage four of the Vuelta in some style, by far the strongest man in that breakaway group. Now let's have a look at the uh, changing picture in the general classification because Darwin Atapuma has an awful lot to gain here. He's going to finish in second place and we start the clock now. And let's see, he's got 1.28 to get over the line ahead of Alejandro Valverde in the white jersey. Ruben uh, Fernandez, the red jersey, is out of the frame. So the next best placed man is uh, Alejandro Valverde. They're beginning to get across to Pete Kenyuk now. He's been brought back by Etix Quickstep and Gianluca Brambilla, who are past him, but Alejandro Valverde Valverde is effectively the leader if he can get over the line ahead of uh, Darwin Atapuma at 1.28, if that makes sense. So 30 seconds now since Darwin Atapuma crossed the line. Alejandro Valverde has a minute to get over the finishing line to take the red jersey. I think Atapuma's going to have enough here. Who else is going to attack? Is anybody going to launch an attack from this group of favourites? So looking at Alberto Contador, beginning to grimace again, out of his saddle, dancing on his pedals like he does. Once again, uh, Naira Quintana is on the wheel of uh, Alejandro Valverde. Esteban Chavez is there too. Chris Froome just chucking his head behind um, Chavez. Chavez looking very strong. I mean, he just moved up that group. He looks the, the easiest out of all of them. Alberto Constable's grimacing a bit. Chris Froome we can't see. He's just sitting down doing, doing what he does best. Um, Alejandro Valverde as well looking quite in control. So these are all the usual suspects, the same as yesterday. They're all up there. Good to see Alberto Contador's not losing time. Andrew Talansky managed yep. to hold on today. Michele Scarpone was there. And uh, Pierre Latour as well from AG Tuala Mondial uh, having a good ride. That's his teammate coming towards the finish line. Axel Demont from the original breakaway group. But there's uh, Alejandro Valverde now starting to sprint. Uh, with Esteban Chavez reacting and Chris Froome hoping to lose no time to his old rival Alejandro Valverde who's looking very very strong heading this group of favourites 140 so Darwin Atapuma will take the race lead and he'll take it by some 20 or 30 seconds I think at the end from Alejandro Valverde we'll wait to see exactly but Valverde heads the group with Chavez, Froome, Contador, Prambila, Scarponi and the rest including Andrew Tulansky, Pikeniuk shakes his head slightly disappointed that that attack didn't stick and uh, Bart de Klerk in the company of a number of others now just coming up towards the finish line. So we have a new race leader, and it is for BMC Darwin Atapuma. Full marks, though, go to this man, Lillian Kamjan, who takes stage four for Direct Energy, a great win. 15 seconds was Kalmajan's winning margin once he'd relaxed and done the right thing by his sponsor. Darwin Atapuma and Ben King came in together just ahead of Andre Zeitz and the remains of the breakaway filled the first 19 places, Scott Waits being 17th at 137. The favourites were as tightly bunched as you'd expect on a climb like this. Valverde, Chavez, Froome, Contador and Quintana from 20th to 24th. Esteban, Movistar tried to put the pressure on again but you're obviously feeling very good. You 
you threw back everything they threw at you. <laughs> yeah, Movistar have the, have the jersey and for the sponsor, it's really important to continue with the jersey, no? because it's a Spanish company. And they pull in all day, but the breakaway is really big. So in one point, have uh, five minutes. We are trying to help in the final part, like 15 or 10 kilometers for the start to climb. The guys were for me fantastic always. The, the big boys in the flat and the, also the, the climbers in the last climb. And, but Movistar pulling really, really, really fast. And I think for the moment is the stronger team here. Chris, we saw you guys <coughs> fire Pete Kenyuk down the road in the finale, or maybe Pete Kenyuk fired himself down the road. What was the thinking behind that? Um, just to put a, put, a, put a bit of pressure on the Movistar guys. Um, and it was interesting to see the, the red jersey Fernandez uh, got on the front when, when Pete attacked there and um, he did his pull. Uh, so I think, I mean, obviously they did react to Pete's move. Um, and it's, it's good for us still having him up there. He's still still in GC, still in the top 10. We've got uh, myself, Leo and Pete still in the top 10. So I think in all things considered, we're in a pretty good place. That shows how desperate Movistar are to be in control and be on the front. Are they doing too much? Are they working too much? Um, they're, they're, they're obviously uh, playing quite a tactical game at the moment because they, they seem quite happy to, to let the red jersey go today. Uh, they, they weren't in any kind of hurry to, to bring the break back, even though they had all nine riders there uh, coming into the final. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think they're, they're, they're actually trying to save their legs a little bit, uh, thinking, thinking about the next few weeks. Lillian Kalmajan, meanwhile, can enjoy the rest of this race regardless of what happens. A first professional win is special by definition, but to do it in a grand tour is a proper announcement of a new talent. Yeah, it's a very great feeling. Uh, I, I start the Vuelta with uh, lots of ideas in my head, but uh, to win a stage uh, soon in the, in the Vuelta I, is, just, uh, is just awesome. Darwin Atapuma looked the only man likely to deprive Kalmajan of the stage win today once the Frenchman had attacked. But of course he had twin ambitions and secured the bigger of them, which was taking the red jersey. Bueno, he attacked at the final, he tried everything for everything. I didn't think he could have the biggest of the career. I tried to reach the first one to be able to win the race, but it's been a very nice satisfaction to be able to have the most red one of the race. So here are the new standings. Darwin Atapuma is the first of three Colombians in the top five, and first overall by 28 seconds from Alejandro Valverde. His four-second lead over Chris Froome is unchanged from this morning. Esteban Chavez and Nairo Quintana stay tied, 38 seconds behind the new leader. The old leader, Ruben Fernandez, drops to seventh, displacing Peter Kenyuk, who also slips behind Leopold Koenig into ninth. Lillian Kalmajan has ridden himself up to 11th overall. Alberto Contador is down one place to 13th, although he's lost no time. Simon Yates did lose a bit of time today. He's now 15th.